Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Three U.S. senators called for a congressional probe on Thursday on safety issues at the nation's aging nuclear plants. The request from Democratic Senators Barbara Boxer of California, Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, and independent Bernie Sanders of Vermont comes following a pair of new exposés by the Associated Press. In a special series called Aging Nukes, the AP revealed that the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the nuclear power industry have been working in tandem to weaken safety standards to keep aging reactors within the rules. Just last year, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission weakened the safety margin for acceptable radiation damage to reactor vessels. The AP report also revealed radioactive tritium has leaked from 48 of the 65 U.S. commercial nuclear power sites, often into groundwater, from corroded, buried piping. Leaks from at least 37 of those facilities contain concentrations exceeding the federal drinking water standard, sometimes hundreds of times the limit. We're joined now from Boston by Jeff Dunn, who wrote the exposés for the Associated Press, the national writer for the AP and member of the AP investigative team. Jeff, welcome to Democracy Now! Why don't you lay out your exposés one at a time, what you found uh, in light of what happened in Fukushima, what we're dealing with here in this country? Well, there are two big ideas. One is that, as you summarized, the nuclear industry and their government regulators have been working together to lower safety standards as aging nuclear systems and parts and plants come close to violating those standards and those rules. And that's been a pattern for, for decades now, and we're seeing uh, a lot of it as these plants get older and older. The other big idea here is that the plants have had piping buried underneath uh, underground, covered underground for so long the piping can't be properly inspected. Uh, it's rarely looked at uh, carefully, visually. Uh, it's rarely dug up. And it's been so long now that a lot of that is corroding. And um, you have leaks that we've documented at three-quarters of the sites, and, in fact, um, a government accountability office, the Congressional Investigative Arm, released uh, had a report released a day or two ago after our series, and in that they say the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the, the uh, federal regulators say, um, you know what, there have been either leaks or spills, presumably many related to aging, some not, but radioactive leaks or spills of tritium and other radionuclides at all the plants. Well, Jeff, the, the picture that you paint here, is, especially when you describe what's happening at some of these plants, is really, it's amazing the, the, the extent of, the, in essence, the, uh, the, the cracks, the corrosion. Uh, how exactly do they uh, weaken the standards when they discover some of, uh, some of these problems at particular plants? Well, what they do first is that um, the industry comes to government, typically. This is the pattern you see. And, and, or sometimes government comes to industry and says, we've got all these parts or systems that are coming close to the standard, even sometimes violating the standard. What do we do about it? And so they set off on a round of research, and the government uh, at, does some of the research. The industry does some of the research, and they find again and again that the standards can be lowered. The, the operative phrase that you hear and you read again and again is that the standards were overly conservative. So then they find justification to, to lower those standards, and suddenly uh, a group of parts or systems that were coming close to violating rules or do violate the rules are back within the rules. The other half of it is that the, the regulators sometimes uh, can't get the systems and parts back within the rules, so then they begin issuing waivers or amendments or special exceptions that still allow the nuclear plants to keep running. Mm. I, I just want to go back to the tritium water. 
Explain the dangers of this and how this is possible all over this country and what exactly it means and what can be done to stem the leaks. I mean, you have Vermont, they are poised to shut down their plant. That's a, that's a very good question, and um, it's a little bit confusing to people, I think. Um, tritium itself, at the levels that it's been released, is probably not a, a, tr a great health threat. Um, it doesn't penetrate the skin very well. It's not like the gamma radiation that people were talking about in Japan. The main danger from tritium, the main health danger, is if you were to drink it. The EPA sets a limit for how much can be in drinking water. None of the leaks have entered drinking water in amounts that would violate the EPA limit so far. Part of the problem, and the GAO report I was just talking about points this out, part of the problem is that the industry and the regulators don't really have a good handle on what's happening in those pipes and vaults and all that equipment under the ground. It's, they don't have technologies that really allow them to see that very well. So the GAO report says we don't really know about how bad the leaks are. That's one part of the problem. Another part. That's a part that, that bears on public health. Another part is that it raises questions about the integrity of the plants, about the integrity of their cooling systems. Some, not all, but some of these, this piping carries water that's used to cool the, the reactors. And in an emergency, as we saw in Japan, you desperately need that water to cool the reactors uh, because the radiation produces a lot of heat and you've got to, got to keep it cool. Um, so that's the other half of the problem. What do all these leaks say about the integrity of that piping? And even in a broader sense about the integrity of a lot of parts that can't easily be seen in nuclear power plants, like all those miles of electrical cable underneath the power plants that are needed by the operators to see what's going on in the plant. And, and so Jeff, it raises a lot of questions that trouble engineers. Uh, Jeff, doesn't the, president, uh, the presence of, of tritium uh, also indicate that probably other, uh, other uh, radioactive materials like strontium uh, or cesium might also be uh, getting uh, uh, leaking from these plants? It does, um, because tritium, that's a radioactive form of hydrogen, by the way, um, and that's why it gets into water, H2O. Um, it, it does. Um, tritium moves through the soil more readily uh, than some of those other radioactive substances, so it's often, um, you often see it first, and then um, there are lots of cases where you see other more powerful radioactive substances that do more health harm in equal amounts after you see the tritium. That's, you're right, that's part of why the tritium is a concern. Can you name names of plants? For example, let's talk um, New York. Uh, what's outside of New York City, of tens of millions of people, the plant and where it stands today? Well, um, they've had... Um, there, there are there are so many problems that it, that it's <laughs> it's hard to enumerate them all. But but uh, for example, um, they've had uh, radioactive leaks from the spent fuel pools at Indian Point. Um, the spent fuel pool. The um, spent fuel pool is where they keep the radioactive fuel after they've used it in the reactor, and that fuel remains thermally hot and radioactive for years to come, so you have to keep it cool, just like the fuel in the reactor. And they've had um, leakage from that uh, spent fuel pool at Indian Point, which is about 25 miles north of New York City. Um, and um, we know how important the spent fuel pools are in a different context in Japan at the Fukushima Daiichi plant because a lot of the radioactive uh, radioactivity that was released in the air there was from the spent fuel pools. So there's been a lot of focus on the spent fuel pools recently, and even um, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Gregory Yasko, has hinted recently that maybe we do need to look at the spent fuel pools in the United States and how securely we're 
keeping the spent fuel pool, the and, spent fuel. And what about evacuation plans? I mean, at places like Indian Point, and you can go around the country. Well, that's something that um, we'll be saying more about on uh, Monday, and a story that's coming out on Monday. And I don't want to get ahead of my employer, but I I can tell you that um, we'll be um, we'll have a lot to say about how much. Uh, population growth there has been around the 65 nuclear commercial nuclear power sites in the United States over the last 30 years we did a historical mapping analysis with mapping software and where the evacuation plans that communities must uh, make for evacuation if it's necessary around the plants where they have weaknesses and where they haven't kept up to date with the population growth. Uh, Jeff, your, your articles also talk about the problems with the reactor vessels that in, enclose uh, the reactors, and you, that there's, you found major problems as well there. Uh, uh, in the documents that you obtained, uh, uh, the, the, the monitoring documents that you obtained uh, from the government? Yeah, it's real interesting. Um, one of the biggest areas of um, aging difficulties has been in so-called embrittlement of the of the steel around the reactors. And what that means is that if you bombard something with neutrons from a, a chain reaction, like the one that goes on inside these reactors, if you bombard steel with neutrons for years and years, it gets more brittle. And as it gets more brittle, like, um, say, a a reed from the beach that maybe you brought home and it gets gets brittle when it undergoes a force it's more likely to suddenly shatter to break and um, the reactor vessels are like that the vessels are these gigantic steel tubs that surround the 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 chain reaction the radioactive fuel and they they uh, provide a shield from it and they they hold it they keep um, uh, the area around it safe and so over the years they've got increasingly brittle there was even one reactor in the early 1990s the um, Yankee Row reactor in Western Massachusetts that had to be closed largely because of concerns about its its vessel getting brittle and um, as Fairly early on, actually, in the industry's history, government and regulators started to notice that reactors were approaching the embrittlement standard for the vessels and, in some cases, even violating that standard. And instead of saying, uh, OK, um, what can we do to get the reactors back within the standard, um, is it possible to um, do a process called annealing that, that would um, uh, make them less brittle? Is it possible to replace them? What the industry and the government did is they launched another round of research and decided, you know what, we can um, back off a little bit on the standard and allow the vessels to become more brittle. And that's continued. There was a second round of this that's taken years that um, just uh, culminated in the last year or two where they raised that safety standard again. Again, the same pattern, saying we didn't need to be so strict. In, a, in other words, we didn't need to be so safe, it's safe enough. Because the government and industry argue that for all the changes, the reactors still remain safe. Maybe not as safe as they were before, but, but plenty safe. That would be their argument. Well, we're going to leave it there. Jeff Dunn, national writer for the Associate Press member of the AP investigative team, has done this series, Aging Nukes. We will continue to report on what you're doing. Thanks so much, Jeff, for reporting to us from Boston.